Hi, this is Jeff Perdue with Western Libraries. In this video, I'll be covering the Hackroll Research and Writing Studio's tips for revising and editing your papers. When we talk about revising, editing, and proofreading, it's important to note that these three words describe very different activities that happen at different stages of writing a paper. Revision means what its name implies, to look at your paper in a different way. Proofreading and editing both refer to finding and fixing errors in your writing, with editing encompassing a focus on style, grammar, and other concerns. It's important to work on revision before turning to editing and proofreading. You want to make sure that your ideas are fully developed, coherent, and well arranged before spending time on stylistic issues and fixing mistakes. So let's take revising first. Your paper likely started with a research or inquiry question. This overall question generated more specific and focused sub-questions that both drove your research and helped you structure your paper. After having drafted your paper, or at least some of it, and incorporated your research, it's time to look over it again to see if you've brought forward all the ideas you intended and that the paper has an appropriate organization. You may have seen this graphic in previous workshops or online resources. The central bubble is meant to represent your overall research or inquiry question. The additional bubbles represent sub-questions. Your research is an attempt to answer each sub-question as a way to answer your central inquiry question. Finally, the smallest dots represent sources that you have found that partially answer each sub-question. And we'll talk more later about the role of sources in your paper structure when we talk about rhetorical moves. Although we talk about inquiry questions and sub-questions, as you write your paper, the inquiry question becomes the central thesis of your paper, while the sub-questions become different claims supporting the thesis. After having drafted your paper, or most of it, you'll want to take a step back to look at the structure of it. There are a few different ways we can go about this. Experiment with these techniques to see which ones work best for your own process. The first technique is to map out your ideas without looking at your draft. Write down your main claim or central thesis or that answer your central inquiry question. Then, write out your subclaims that address various aspects implicated by your thesis or that answer the themes suggested by your subquestions. Then, indicate what sources go with each subclaim or that answer specific subquestions. It would also be good to indicate the rhetorical move or moves used for each source. And again, we'll cover rhetorical moves in just a moment, so hang on to that thought. As you're mapping out your ideas, it can be useful to think about what functions each section of your paper serves, rather than on what you're saying. In other words, what functions are served by your introduction? Are these the functions that you need your introduction to accomplish? Is each paragraph or each section doing the job you need it to be doing in that part of the paper? This revision activity may lead you to rewrite parts of your paper, or even to write new paragraphs. While there's no such thing as a real formula for writing, and any formula-based approach would lead to a really boring paper, this template may assist you in drafting paragraphs with sources if you're feeling stuck. After mapping out your ideas, you can create an idea path showing how each subclaim connects to the others, and being specific about what the connection is can be useful. You can also try out moving subclaims around to see if a different idea path works better. Comparing this idea path to your original map that you created without looking at your draft is another way to get a different perspective on what you've written. Another technique is using summarizing techniques for your draft. This is sometimes called a reverse outline because you create it after having written your paper. This slide shows one approach to this, focused on articulating the main point of a paragraph and its purpose or function, as well as any questions you might have about it. Another approach is to create a one-sentence summary of each paragraph, either in the margins or in a separate sheet of paper. This can allow you to see if any paragraph should be reshuffled. But perhaps even more powerfully, this technique can help you see if you have any missing paragraphs or unneeded paragraphs that don't support your thesis. Showing your summary sentences to another person can be especially helpful. Ideally, another reader should be able to understand the flow of your ideas just by reading your one-sentence summaries. If something is confusing to them, you may want to examine whether you have any gaps in how your ideas were organized. 